Well, folks, uh, today we're in the lovely North Antrim town of uh, Ballycastle, just outside it, and uh, we are with uh, Reverend John Stambridge. Have I got that right? You sure have, and uh, welcome to North Antrim, and thanks for bringing the sunshine with, this guy, with you, no, Gareth. No problem. Um, we're here today to talk about something uh, very important, um, Reverend Stambridge, and I'm just going to hand over and let you explain to all our viewers uh, why we're here today and what we're talking about. Yeah, Gareth, uh, I'm the uh, minister of Ballycastle and Croakmore Presbyterian Churches, and I'm also the Smith family uh, pastor here in Ballycastle. And on uh, the 12th of May, just past, I got a call from Ryan, uh, one of our church members, to get up to the farm as quickly as possible. And when I arrived here, there was a catastroph catastrophic uh, accident that had occurred on the main road outside the farm, in which uh, uh, Ryan lost his, his wife and his youngest daughter, age three and left his uh, little daughter, Hannah, age five, uh, seriously injured. And uh, when I arrived in the scene, there was one ambulance uh, present with uh, ambulance services treating the casualties. But as things unfolded, I began to realize that everybody involved in the accident were local, were actually neighbors. And, uh, but as, as things went on, Hannah was, uh, uh, lifted. There was a decision made by the ambulance crews at that stage that they had to get Hannah to hospital as quickly as possible. And uh, she was blue lighted to the Causeway Hospital where she received treatment in the um, emergency department there. And then she was heli-fact down to the uh, paediatric intensive care unit in the Royal Victoria Hospital where she received uh, treatment there for the injuries that she had received here out in Gort Conley. Uh, I think at that time, I was just absolutely amazed as was Ryan in the midst of the shock, the treatment that Hannah was receiving there. And we were totally blown away by the care, not only that she received, but also uh, that ha or Ryan received at that stage. And uh, it was from that point, uh, after a few weeks that the ambulance crew here from Ballycastle uh, contacted me and asked me to uh, speak to Ryan to see whether they could organise a fundraiser uh, in support of Hannah. So when I went to Ryan, Ryan basically said no. He said, uh, I don't need a fundraiser for we Hannah. Uh, we we'll want it for the paediatric ICU in the Royal Victoria Hospital. And so Hannah's PICU uh, fundraiser was birthed uh, virtually overnight and we've just been blown away since then. I think even the farming community here in North Antrim over the, the days and weeks after it, one of the things that I was blown away with was how the community came together like silage was due to be cut here people just turned up and did it put it in the shed and that was it. Uh, so I know that Ryan's big focus here is and one of the things that he has uh, realised was that he never thought that anything like this would happen to him and yet when he arrived down in Belfast he met other parents who had children who were maybe only a week old some of them 17, 18 years of age and they were receiving the quality care that his wee Hannah was receiving as well so that's what it's all about uh, I was just blown away with the ambulance crew here because without their shout and their decision on the day, uh, Gareth, uh, we wouldn't have wee Hannah with us. It's as simple as that and she's making incredible progress, uh, all, all as a result of the incredible work of uh, our ambulance crew, uh, Coast Guard, ambulance service and the ICU staff. Yep, it was, um, there was a lot of different Departments, if you want to word it that way, and emergency services came together that day. And um, I think, you know, when I was chatting to Ryan on the phone, that's exactly what he was saying. It was just incredible to see how how it all just came together and how, the, you know, on the journey. Well, how's Hannah doing as uh, we make this video? Hannah is a wee walking, and I'll, I'll say that, walking miracle. 
and she is progressing every day. I'm only going up now twice a week. And it's like saying, you know, if you had a nephew or a niece, a newborn nephew, niece, and uh, you haven't seen them for about three weeks and you see the progression. I'm seeing that in two or three days. Every time I come up, she's doing something new. So please keep praying for Hannah. Keep please supporting the Hannah Piku fundraiser and, and let's support our uh, intensive care unit at the hospital. So what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who's getting hurt? <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to have to hurt. Uh, the three paramedics, uh, Keith, Connor, and Danny and myself, we're going to walk for 24 hours around a circuit from Ballycastle Seafront out to Marconi's, up under the diamond and Ballycastle and back down to the seafront. We're just going to continue going around like uh, crazy men walking around that circuit for 24 hours until our feet are blistered and we're sore. And uh, if you're free, please come along. Please come along and support uh, the work of uh, Helping Hand, who is the charity for the paediatric ICU or the Children's Hospital. And thank you to Grassmen as well for your support and uh, your help in all the promo on the, the media. I'll just hand over to uh, Keith, Connor and Danny from the ambulance service now, and they're gonna tell you what they did on the day of the 12th of May. We've just called in and we're uh, just saying hello to uh, Keith, Connor and Danny. Uh, Keith's gonna tell us a little bit about the actual challenge that they have set themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty tough looking. Can you explain what exactly you're going to do? Well, the, the challenge we've set ourselves is to walk continuously on a roughly five to six mile route for 24 hours nonstop. And the reason we've chosen a route roughly that size is we would like the public to come and support us during daylight hours if they're able to, and they can pick up any part of the route they want, nice and short, nice and steady. Connor, surely that's madness. Yep, but we're, <laughs> we're a pretty mad bunch and we just decided we had to do something to support uh, the Smith family in this uh, testing time for them. It was a, a unique call that we did what we could. It worked out okay for Hannah, but we came away from it just feeling we had to do something, something more and this provides the, the Ballycastle community an opportunity to come together as a community and show their their thanks and their appreciation for for everything that's going to take place. Um, yes, it's mad, but we'll we'll motor through it. You guys will get it done. Well, Danny, <laughs> it's a would you say working here in Bally Castle because you're right at the tip of Northern Ireland. Is it a, a it's a it's very much a, a rural. Uh, farming area, is it, do you see a good camaraderie ship throughout rural Ballycastle? Yep, I do, I mean, I, well, I live and work in the town, so I mean, I would see people that, obviously people you would deal with at work, out and about, and you'd be talking to them from time to time, and, but yeah, yeah you also see when things happen, the support that the community gives, and I, I would see it from a distance, deal with some, a call, maybe somebody, they're all in to support the family, and things are done, and a lot of subtle wee things are done too, you know, and the, the support that's been given to this cause so far, I, I'm blown away. I am actually blown away by it, and how and the amount of people around the town that are uh, supporting it as well, and, and not just other services too, you know, other, other people. Yep. It's just amazing the support for everything that happens. Well, look, guys, uh, on behalf of um, all members of the public of Northern Ireland, well, thank you for your service and for doing this because this is what I would consider going above and beyond and just a very decent, honourable thing to do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. These guys here <laughs> up in Bally Castle are, uh, have set themselves a, a bit of a, a tight one, <laughs> as we would say. Um, so just coming on from the back of these guys, the, the nominated charity, is uh, Helping Hand, uh, which you're involved. Can you give us a very quick uh, ABC of, of what exactly the money that, that's going to be raised here, what exactly it does, where it goes, and roughly how it works, please? Yeah. 
Uh, well, Helping Hand, first of all, was set up by the medical staff within the Royal Belfast Hospital for Sick Children. Uh, that's commonly known as the Children's Hospital. We all know it as that. Uh, it is the uh, only dedicated children's hospital in Northern Ireland, and as such, it deals with the sickest children. All the major paediatric specialities are based in the Children's Hospital, and it is there that the sickest children come. Uh, Helping Hand Charity was set up with a very simple uh, remit, and that is to maintain and improve the excellent standards of health care that we expect for our children and that are delivered by the 400 staff in the Children's Hospital. Uh, a, ch a hospital stay is a traumatic experience for anybody, but a, as a child that is all multiplied and is very stressful, very uh, traumatic uh, for both the child and for the parents. And we help with just uh, as well as uh, everything else, the basic things to try and make the hospital a little bit more child friendly uh, and less bore boring. Uh, toys and games, there's a dedicated team of uh, play specialists in the hospital who uh, work daily with the children to prepare them for uh, procedures, etc. Um, we try to give them the equipment, iPads and uh, PlayStations, etc., to, to help them achieve that. But it gets a bit more serious in that as well. And in this case, all the monies that are uh, raised from this fantastic event are going to the Paediatric Intensive Care Unit. And again, it is the only intensive care unit for children in the whole of Northern Ireland. So again, the, the sickest children come there. Uh, like all government bodies, they're struggling for funding at all times. There's always pressures on the budgets. And what Helping Hand does is try to alleviate the pressures on that to, to get new sources of funding for just that little bit extra. Go that, little, that extra mile and buy the, better, the best equipment available uh, that the clinicians have uh, researched and need to uh, deliver their, their fantastic service. Uh, one or two examples of that are uh, there's a, we invested in a, a telemedical uh, diagnostic system and this enables the clinicians in the hospital to uh, diagnose children from satellite hospitals around while they're maybe uh, on the way into the hospital. They can uh, get a, an idea of their condition before they get here and they're prepared, ready for them when they arrive. Uh, we have funded three giraffe beds, which are specialist beds, which uh, act they have a canopy that comes down and act as an isolation unit and that's particularly useful in the, uh, in the winter months whenever uh, the, the, the infection uh, diseases spread. Uh, we're currently just in the process of buying a, a second ultrasound scanner and again this is just uh, state of the art and it's just a little bit above what would normally be uh, available on the budgets from the hospital. And that is going to be used both in the paediatric intensive care unit and in the uh, transfer teams that bring in patients from the satellite hospitals from all around. And all of those are going to make a huge difference to the, the children in the hospital. Wow, so it really is. It's maybe more than a helping hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like to think so, yes. Uh, on behalf of the charity and the hospital, I'd like to thank everybody involved in this amazing project. Uh, the Grassmen and, and Gareth have been very supportive in putting all this uh, publicity together, and that's going to be a huge help. Uh, to the four guys that are doing it, Keith, Connor, Danny and Reverend John, um, uh, you're mad, but uh, it's a, a fantastic uh, sacrifice that you're making. I hope to be here on the day. Uh, to help you. I'll not be doing the whole thing 24 hours, uh, but I will certainly uh, do a couple of laps with you and try and encourage you. Uh, the event is happening, a uh, 24-hour walk around Bally Castle on the 25th, 26th of July from 5pm to 5pm. So uh, dig deep, get into your uh, Just Giving page. On, uh, uh, it's, it's a fantastically easy way to give money. And the, the, the nice thing is that the government give us something back on that. Uh, we they have a thing called gift aid. So we get an extra 25% of whatever you give for no extra cost to you. And, and if you're free, come along on the day and uh, you can join in the fun. So a huge thank you to everybody involved. And I know from a past experience that the farming community is second to none in supporting events like this. And uh, a, a huge thank you in advance to them.